How's it everyone? This is Lokhole, and in today's video, I'll be sharing the infinite high strategy that helped me to farm up my headhunter in just four days. I want to give a big, big, big thank you to Guitarholic. He was the one who planned all of this out and shared the strategy with me and is allowing me to share it with you. So I'm sure you're wondering, is this strategy still viable now? Or is it just a league start thing? It is still viable. You can still do it. However, blueprint prices have gone up. Although the upside is that the gems, we are going to be farming unusual gems. Those sell for more. So it'll be maybe a little bit harder to get into the blueprints. But you will be able to sell the gems for a lot more than you would on league start. But before starting this strategy, just be sure to check the price of blueprints. If a lot of people are going to start doing this, the price of blueprints might jump up. And if you are watching this, maybe that's a hint. Maybe you should start specking into heist on the Atlas tree and selling markers and blueprints to people who want to do this strategy. But this guide is going to cover running contracts, blueprints, and it includes a build designed to run this content for maximum efficiency. Let's get into it. Phase one, this is going to be campaign preparation. So in this first phase, we're going to be leveling our character normally through the campaign. And from about level 55 onwards, we're going to head to the Rogue Harbor and talk to Wakano to buy contracts. So we're going to run over to this guy, go over to purchase items, and you'll see he offers a selection of contracts. Now, these are going to change every time our character's level changes. So from level 55 onwards, every time we level up, we're going to run to the Rogue Harbor and then check for contracts. And there's a few that we're looking for. So early on, we're going to be looking for lock picking. You can see there's one here. We're going to be looking for deception. Here's one over here. And then also perception is good. He's not selling any of those and engineering as a backup. So I have a regex. You can find it. I've got a little document that I'll link in the description where we can search for those. And then every time you level up, go to Wakano, check for contracts. Now, it's important to note that these cost orbs of chance and sometimes orbs of alchemy. So while you're leveling, just be sure to pick up as many of these as you can and save them. Don't waste them because you're going to need to use them to spend it on these. Once we make it to Act 10, after completing the final trial of Ascendancy, we're going to need to head over to Lab and do our Merc Lab. This is important. It gives us increased phasing effect. I have specs out of the build. I'm now past Infinite Heist, but we're going to get Onslaught and then increase onslaught effect and also phasing. So getting your Merc Lab will give you all of these, which are important to the build. So get to Act 10, do your Merc Lab, and then head to the Rogue Harbor. And it's important, this is very important, do not kill Katava, you don't have to. All that's gonna do is it gives you plus two passive points at the expense of minus 30 resistances, which is gonna make gearing harder. So don't kill Katava, just once you've done your lab, head straight back to the Rogue Harbor. I'm sure it's silly, but let me explain. In case you don't know, to get to the Rogue Harbor, you right click one of these Rogue Markers, click the little pizza portal and head in. Let's go over the second phase. This is gonna be running the contracts in preparation for running blueprints. So in this phase, we're gonna be building up our contracts. We're gonna be building up our currency tab and also generating reveals. I'm going to explain what reveals are in the next phase, but pretty much in this phase, all currency we get is going to be fed into saving up for blueprints. Unfortunately, for some reason, blueprints hardly ever drop in contracts, so you're going to have to buy them from the trade site. Now, the first thing we're going to do once we get here is we want to unlock all of our members. And in order to do that, we have to run a mission, a contract with one member, a specific member to unlock another. So let's go down the list. And this is also included in the document that's linked in the description. I know it's a lot of information. Once you get here, it makes a lot of sense. So we're going to run a cost mission. 
This is lock picking, perception or agility, contract. This will unlock Huck. We run Huck to unlock Niles. We run Niles to unlock Vendiri. We run Vendiri to unlock Gianna. We run Tibbs to unlock Tolina. And Tolina unlocks Nanette. Now these are all listed out in that document and it'll show you which types of contracts to run. But the reason we do this is so that once we run blueprints, we have all of our heist members as options. So you're in the Rogue Harbor, you've done all your little contracts to unlock your people. And now you should have a nice little stock of contracts to run. So let's go over the different types of contracts we're going to be running and why. So as you can see in lock picking missions, there's these little side rooms over here. These have got little currency chests in them. And that's why we run these. You're going to get a lot of chaos orbs and alchemies and other currency from here. So first off, that is why we are running lock picking missions. Now with deception missions, we're going to be using Gianna. It's important to use Gianna. She gives us those reveals at a highly discounted rate. The reason deception is preferable is because there are no doors on the way out. You won't have to stop and unlock doors. So let me just show you. This is basically how a contract is going to look. And by the way, this is on this is on a, a lightning strike radar. I do have the right gear, but I'm not going to be going as fast. Another thing in deception missions, there's these little side rooms with divination cards. You want to go get those. And then at the end of every single contract, there's going to be a curio display. This will end the contract. Well, you'll click it and then an item will drop and then you're going to have to run out and just make sure you don't die on the way out, because if you do, you're going to drop everything that you collected on the way. And I'm going to show you why deception is so good, because there's no doors on the way out. You just run. And there we go. That is what a contract looks like. Now, another important thing to note is this little alert level bar at the bottom. Every time you open a chest, it's going to increase your alert level by a certain amount. You can hover over it and see once this reaches max, the entire place is going to enter lockdown, which will give you 20 seconds to reach the curio if you haven't already collected it. If you don't collect it in time, you won't be able to get it. So just pay attention to your alert level while you're doing this. That's why I prioritize when I get into a heist, into a contract, just see is there like a divination card or a currency little side room and then make sure you get those and then click any little boxes along the way without tripping the alarm. You don't want to go over too much. And then once you've completed your contract, you can sell the little curio to Faustus. He's going to give you a few rogue markers and we're going to need these for the blueprints. And there you go. So we're just going to be doing that lock picking, deception, perception, all in preparation for the next step, which is going to be blueprints. But before we do that, something very important is vendor refreshing. Now, the reason we call this infinite heist is that we don't ever have to go to the trade site to buy contracts. We will have to go for blueprints, but not contracts. And the way we do this is with vendor refreshes. So like I said at the start, vendor inventories change when our character's level changes. Not only when we level up, but when we level down. So I'm not sure if you know, but there is a vendor recipe for a book of regression. It is one wisdom scroll and one orb of scouring. That will give you a book of regression. This reduces your character's level by one. And if you right click it, Wakano's inventory refreshes. So what we're going to be doing is I'm level 89 now. Ignore that. But we're going to be bouncing between about level 60 or 62 all the way up to 67 or 68 and then leveling down and then checking Wakano's inventory every time we level down. So let's say we level 67. We're going to buy a bunch of these from Faustus. Then we're going to right click it, check Wakano, buy the kind of contracts we need and then level down and then check his inventory, buy the ones we need. I'm not going to do it now because I don't actually want to level down. But then 
it's just a cycle of leveling up and then buying contracts every time you level up and then leveling down and buying contracts every time you level down. That's how we consistently maintain our contracts. I don't know how to delete this. I don't want you on my cursor. Ah. I'm going to give you a few important tips during this phase. One, do not over level your gems. If you're level 67 and you've been leveling up your gems all the way to 67 and then you de level and your gems have a level requirement of 67, all your gear is going to fall off. That's exactly what happened to me. And in order to de level your gems, you'll have to sell it with an orb of scouring, which can get a bit expensive. So just try to make sure that your gem level, this one is. 64 64 that you are not going below this required level this is actually guitar holics gear so i assume he is only bouncing between let's say level 64 and maybe 70 even so don't over level your gems another important thing is if you buy five books of regression let's say you go up to level 68 don't click all five of them and then check wakano you must check wakano for contracts then click one to de-level, then check his inventory, then de-level, then check his inventory every time because his inventory is gonna refresh every single time. All right, so we've made it to phase three where we're gonna be running blueprints and we're gonna be running unusual gem blueprints. Early on in League, you can also run replica blueprints, but I found that those are extremely bad now. However, Unusual gems, that's where the money is. So, unfortunately, because blueprints don't really drop in contracts, again, I don't know why, we're gonna have to go to the trade site to buy them. And I've included a handy trade link in the document that I've linked in the description. So you just click that link, it'll open the trade site. Those are the blueprints that you want to buy. Now, we've been running Gianna for reveals, and this is where I can explain what a reveal is. So in each blueprint, you're going to have things called wings. These are essentially areas similar to contracts at the end of which is a reward. So in unusual gems, there's going to be five different gems of which you can choose one. So if we have three wings, we're going to have three chances to get a good unusual gem. Essentially, we'll be able to pick three out of 15 gems so in order to reveal a wing we have gianna over here and as you can see there's a 40 percent discount so with her revealing this wing is 1567 and with wakano it's 2611 per wing so that's a pretty hefty discount and that's why we've been running gianna deception and perception contracts each contract you complete with gianna will give you a reveal discount now, we are not gonna reveal entire wing. Not only does this cost more reveals, it costs a lot more rogue markers, and we don't actually want this. We're just interested in the thing at the end, the unusual gem, the curio display room. We don't care about these little things on the side. So what we do is we just click this, and this will give us access to the curio display room. And then we just run, blah, 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 and we go to the end. I will run a blueprint just to show you how it works. So once we have revealed all wings of our blueprint, we're gonna head down to the planning room, head over to the planning table, clicky over here, and this window is gonna pop up. In here, we're able to select which heist member is gonna carry out which role. So you just click this, and then it's up to you. I like to pick whichever one is cheapest, the lower the level of the heist member, the longer it'll take for them to carry out their tasks. So opening a door might take a bit longer, but it costs cheaper. So I'll take whichever one's cheapest and like this. Gianna, these are just four points different. So I would take Gianna because she's a level higher for four. Here, I'm gonna take Huck. However, you can maybe pick different guys if you don't wanna have two of the same, but eh, it doesn't really matter. Over here, Huck. Bendiri actually hucks cheaper and then cost cost huck and again Gianna just four points cheaper and then what we're gonna do 
you've got all this laid out. You go confirm plans. And then over on the left here, you can see total 1147. This is how many rogue markers it costs to run the blueprint. As you can see, rogue marker cost is adding up very quickly. It averages about 5,000 per blueprint. You're not gonna be able to maintain that. So again, you're gonna to have to go to the trade site to buy your markers, but you can get about 40 or 50,000 for an exalted orb. Once we're inside the blueprint, we should have at least three wings in which we can enter. At the end of each wing, we're gonna be given five options of which we can choose one. So there's gonna be five gems, pick one, and then the moment you click that, lockdown's gonna happen. You're gonna to have to run out. Now just make sure you don't die. If you die on the way out, you drop everything. So try to not die. This build is designed to not die, goes fast. But yeah, you can sometimes get one shot, although that happened about four times in the hundred that I ran. So while you're in the blueprint, we're gonna prioritize not tripping the alarm. So don't click too many boxes. If there's a currency side room, grab that. But again, just watch that alarm alert at the bottom. Don't trip that. Otherwise, you're going to get to the end and have to panic and choose one of the rewards without price checking it. So don't do that. Once you're in the reward room, you're going to have to price check all five gems. I know it seems like a bit of a schlep, but you'll get better at identifying which is best. So if you have a second monitor, pull up the trade window on your second monitor, just type in whatever, Phantasmal Smite, and then price check it, price check the next one. If you only have one screen, what you can do is head over to options and then go into windowed full screen. This will allow you to alt tab much more easily. You can also head over to PoE Ninja to see which of the alternate quality gems are most valuable and then keep an eye out for those. And then once you've chosen, you click it, it's gonna drop and you're gonna have to run. So on the way out, you're gonna encounter some choke points where there will be a door that needs to be unlocked by one of the heist members. This is where you need to drop your defiance banner, maybe use your granite flask just to stay alive and then run in circles. And then once you make it out, then do the next swing and the next swing and then the next blueprint. As for rogue gear, this is not super important. We are running very low level contracts and blueprints, but I suppose there are some mods that are desirable. I chose reduced hiring fee. This means you use fewer markers and then also increase rogue marker value of primary heist target. This will mean that those little curios at the end of contracts are gonna be worth a bit more. You'll get more rogue markers and have to buy fewer from the trade site. You can also get some stuff like this, which is nice for this specific build, Grand Civil 10 Malevolent skill. We're doing a damage over time build, so this is a nice option, but honestly, these don't matter all that much. So what now? You've run your contracts, you've run your blueprints, you're just gonna rinse and repeat. Just keep leveling up, buying your contracts on the way, leveling down, buying your contracts on the way down, getting currency, investing that into blueprints and rogue markers, running the blueprints, and then selling the gems. Later on, once you have a nice foundation of currency, you can stop running all of the engineering and lock picking ones and just focus on farming Gianna reveals instead. And now I'm sure you wanna know, which builds are we gonna be using for this? I highly recommend this build. This is a super speedy raider that just phases through everything. It's got about 250% movement speed, capped spell suppression, high evasion and armor, at least for its level. So let's go over some of the gems. We're gonna be using Toxic Rain in Mirage Archer. So when you use this, you're gonna get a little Mirage Archer that keeps attacking with Toxic Rain. And then we're also gonna be using Toxic Rain linked with Ballista. Put that down, I think you can have three, and those are gonna kill stuff when you get to doors. So when you reach a choke point in a blueprint or a contract where one of your heist members is trying to unlock a door, you can just drop a few of these, shoot your Mirage Archer, and then run around and try not to die while the heist member unlocks the door. Going over some of the utility gems, we're placing phase run on our left click and we're linking with increased duration and efficacy. 
Now these linked with phase run mean that we're gonna have 100% uptime on phase run. This makes us run faster. And this is also why having Barrage Archer and the ballistas is, is important. Once they're in place, you can stop manually attacking and just let them do the work and just keep running. Phase run is canceled if you perform another action. So, yep, drop your stuff, run around, don't get hit, and phase run will keep you speedy and buffed. Another movement skill we're using is Smoke Mine. I didn't notice Guitaraholic wasn't using this, but I like it because it gives us a little speed buff. This makes us go faster, lets us travel great distances, and then Blink Arrow. This is another option that you can use. Also helps us to traverse the landscape more efficiently. Going over our auras, we have Determination. This is gonna give us more armor. We have Precision, just for a bit of accuracy rating. We don't care about the crit chance. And then Grace for more evasion. And then lastly, we have Defiance Banner. This is gonna give us more armor and evasion and take less damage from critical strikes. And again, once we reach those choke points in blueprints and contracts, we're gonna drop it on the ground for an even bigger boost to our armor and evasion. We just wanna stay alive. We don't have to kill everything on the way out. That's pretty much it for the gems. Let's go over some of the gear. So you can use a plus three bow. I was using plus two level of socketed bow gems, plus one level of gems, or you can use something like this. Again, this is Guitaraholic's gear. This has just high physical damage and cold damage. This works perfectly. And when combined with a vile arrow quiver, which converts physical damage as extra chaos, having high fizz works. Otherwise get a plus three bow. Very important is Queen of the Forest. We get increased movement speed per 600 evasion rating up to 75%. We are gonna have pretty high evasion. I believe mine was about 35,000. So that made me go pretty fast. Also on the tree, there is this mastery, 100% increased evasion rating from your body armor. That's gonna give our little queen of the forest about 6,000 evasion rating, which makes us go faster. And then as for rings, Praxis. Praxis is a great choice. Minus six total mana cost of skills, meaning that we can cast this for very little and reserve even more mana. Speaking of reduced mana cost, Replica Conqueror's efficiency. Also, non-channeling skills have minus nine total mana cost. Again, this us cast our Toxic Rain for even less. As for gloves, resistance, life, attack speed. These are all good mods. Belt, life, and resistances. Boots, you can use three-step assault boots. I was using these. Otherwise, just boots with high movement speed, resistances, and life. Same for the helmets, life, resistances, dexterity, intelligence, strength. You might need some of those just to equip all your gems and gear. Amulet, same thing. Life, resistances, attributes are all very nice. So other than Queen of the Forest and Praxis, I would say these are mandatory for the build. The rest of it is very straightforward. And as for the Anoint, we're using Freedom of Movement, Increased Evasion Rating while phasing, and Movement Speed while phasing. And we are permanently phasing because of our little node over here. 40% chance to suppress spell damage and phasing. We are always phasing. So this is more movement speed and more evasion rating. We can also make use of a replica Karui ward. This will give us increased area of effect. This will help us reach the 21 AOE breakpoint that we need for max overlaps on our toxic rain pods. Thank you to Turtle for that little pro tip. But the rest of it is very straightforward. Let's quickly go over the ascendancy. Ignore what I have allocated because, again, I have respect into Lightning Strike Raider, but we're grabbing Quartz Infusion, again, for the spell suppression and phasing. And then we're grabbing Rapid Assault, Onslaught, more attack, cost, and movement speed, and then Avatar of the Chase, 100% increase Onslaught effect, and 10% more chance to evade attacks during Onslaught. So we're going very fast with these and getting hit, hopefully, very little. Now included in the description is a very detailed path of building provided to us by Guitaraholic. It's incredibly thorough. It'll help you figure out which points to allocate when throughout the campaign. Once you get to heist, all of it is right 
here. It also includes skills, so you'll see, okay, starting setup, we get these while we're leveling, and then we get this, and then we get that. And then over at the notes section, he's also made this stunning guide, so you can go through here. This will help you level up as you go. It's a very, very straightforward build, nothing too fancy, and all the information you need is here. That's going to be it for this video, folks. Be sure to check the description for the document. I know this was a lot of information, but that document should hopefully help condense it and make it more palatable and easy to understand. This was very confusing to me when I was just reading it and learning about it. But once you actually get into the Rogue Harbor, it makes a lot more sense. And it's actually an incredibly easy strategy. Once you get into the rhythm, you don't even have to think about it. Guitaraholic and I both farmed our headhunters using this strategy with nasty colds. So yeah, it's very easy, even though it seems very complicated. So be sure to check the description for all the links. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Stay safe. And if you do this strategy, please let me know in the description. How did it go for you? Take care. Catch you in the next video. Bye bye.